Let's kick things off with a bit of a game to see if you have a keen eye. Can you spot the difference between these two little clips? Here's the first one. And here's the second one. The difference is kind of subtle since they're essentially the same shot, but in the second one, we're changing the speed of certain parts of the clips to make the impact of the ax hitting the wood even more epic. This technique is called speed ramping, and it's a relatively easy trick that you can use in your videos to breathe new life into them if they're feeling a little bit stale. So secure the cup and let's learn some speed ramping. What is speed ramping anyway? The short answer is that speed ramping is changing the speed of a clip in the middle of a clip. So for example, rather than deciding that an entire clip will be slow motion or fast motion, maybe we want to start it at regular speed and then slow down in the middle to emphasize a part of the action before going back to full speed or even fast motion at the end of the clip. And this can be done in any combination of ways, multiple times in one clip if you want. The sky's the limit, really. Now, instead of just exploring Explaining, I wanted to show you a practical example of how I might actually use speed ramping. So I created a sequence that utilizes speed ramping in a whole bunch of different ways. See if you can catch all the different ways that I was playing around with the speed. And while we're checking out the clip, I'm going to tell you about the sponsor of this video, Doer. Dewar has played a huge part in keeping me warm this year with their winter line, including their responsibly made merino wool beanie and most notably their fireside pants. The Fireside Denim have limitless stretch, a DWR coating to repel water or snow, and an interwoven fleece lining that makes them a one-layer solution to keep warm and dry while you're out on an adventure. I've hiked through knee-deep snow, chopped firewood, and brushed a foot of snow off my car in these pants, and they have always kept me warm and comfortable. But that is far from all that Doer has to offer. Their entire lineup is a perfect blend of technical, style, and comfort so that you get everything that you want from a jean in any situation without sacrificing the look. So check out the Doer lineup for yourself using the link in the description and get 15% off your order with the code DUNNA15. Huge thank you to Doer for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's take a look at some of the building blocks of speed ramping, and then we'll analyze that sequence, and I'll show you the different ways that I used it, and that you can use it in your videos. So I'm in DaVinci Resolve here, so some of this might look a little bit different, but whatever editor you're using will likely have something similar to make this happen. The first method of speed ramping is what I like to call the brute force option. In this specific case, what we're going to try and do is slow down the middle section of a clip. So we're going to toss the clip on the timeline, chop it where we want the speed to change, chop it again where we want the speed to go back up to normal, and then we're going to right click the section we want slowed down and hit change clip speed. Type in the speed that you want for the middle section and make sure that ripple timeline is selected so that it stretches out the length of the clip and moves everything over after the clip and voila! We have technically speed ramped this clip. It starts at the normal speed, slows down in the middle, and then speeds back up at the end. However, the reason that I called this the brute force option is because the transition between regular speed and slowed down is immediate, and it's therefore kind of jarring. It's also really hard to make any changes after you've already made your cuts. If we wanted to change the point at which our speed change starts or ends, we can't just drag the clips around easily. And finally, you're left with three clips to deal with instead of one now. So as much as this method is nice and easy, it's not always the best. However, there's another tool that opens up a bit more control to us if we right click on the clip and hit retime controls. You can also hit command R or control R if you're on a PC. Now you can see on the clip that some new things have opened up. It shows us the speed at the bottom, currently it's 20%, but if we drag from the top right, we can increase or decrease the speed to whatever we need. We can also click the down arrow at the bottom to access some pre reset speed tools like changing to a specific speed percentage, reset it to 100%, creating a freeze frame, reversing the clip, and then there's the rewind and speed ramp that are both little speed presets that I have never really found very useful, but you can play around with them if you want to. As it currently stands, we still have the same problem as before. We've got three clips and those transitions are jarring. So let's go back to before we made the cuts and we just had one clip. Let's open our retime controls, put our playhead 
ahead where we want the speed change to start, click the drop down and choose add speed point. Repeat that for where we want the speed change to end, and now we can see the three different sections without any cuts in the clip. If we click the down arrow on the middle section, we can choose a preset speed percentage, or if we click and drag the handle on the top right, we can manually change the speed and it automatically shifts over the rest of the clip. One of the cool things about doing it this way is that we can also use the handles at the bottom of the clip to change where the different sections start and end. So if I decided that the slowed down section in the middle went on a bit too long, I can pull the right handle to shorten it and make the end section start a little bit earlier. In this method, the middle section stays slowed down, but you can alter where the speed changes happen in your clip. Okay, so this is pretty cool, but those changes are still happening suddenly instead of smoothly, so we're going to need a bit more control. Let's right click the clip and hit retime curve, and it will open up our retime keyframes. Initially, it will pop up with retime frame in the top left, but what we want right now is to click that drop down menu and choose retime speed instead. Now we can see pretty obviously what's happening. The line is at 100% speed, and then it drops down suddenly to 20% speed in the middle, and then back up to 100% speed at the end. To smooth the transitions out, click the keyframe point and hit the little curve button at the top. Now you can see that it transitions smoothly from 100% down to 20%, and we can play with the handles to adjust that curve. It doesn't necessarily need to be a big long curve, but it definitely helps to make that transition smoother. Let's repeat this with the other side of our speed change, and now we have nice smooth transitions in and out of our slow motion section. If you really wanted to, you could actually do all of the speed changes right here in the retime speed curve. Starting from our original clip again with our retime speed curve showing, let's find those spots that we want to change the speed, and we're going to hold Option or Alt and click to add points. Then we can drag down the line in the middle section to decrease the speed. We can also drag the points left and right to move where they happen in the clip, similar to how we were dragging around the retime controls before. Now, if you're having trouble seeing what you're doing, or if you need to change the speed beyond the visible scale, you can change the scale of this area by dragging on the negative numbers at the bottom or the positive numbers on the top. So now we know the technicalities of how to speed ramp, so let's break down that sequence and see some of the different ways that you can actually use this technique in your projects. Speed ramping use number one is to use slow motion to emphasize a specific action. As I walk out of the door, I look off into the distance and it slows down right at that moment to add importance to it. You'll see this a bunch of times in this sequence and it's probably the most popular way to use speed ramping. For example, think of like an action movie where something epic is happening and it slows down so that you can actually see what's going on, or like the love interest walks through the door and it's slow motion to emphasize the fact that that person is making an impact walking into the room. But right at the end of this clip, we see speed ramping use number two, and that is as a transition. Right at the end of the slow motion section, when it's going to cut to the close up of me putting my hat on, it speeds back up to 100% for six frames only. And then at the start of the next clip, it's 100% speed for five frames before it goes back into slow motion, emphasizing my awesome beanie. So that's only a total of 11 frames or about a third of a second over top of the cut where it goes back to full speed. Not only does this move things along nicely rather than being all in slow motion, it really solidifies the cut as one unified movement, and it makes it less noticeable if there are slight inconsistencies in that movement. This is another one that's used many times throughout the sequence, even when the two clips aren't necessarily a matched movement like that. The third use for speed ramping is to speed up to intensify the action. In that clip that I showed you at the start, I used both slow motion and fast motion to really make that axe hitting the wood as epic as possible. The clip starts in slow motion with me swinging the axe upward, but rather than just using 100% speed, I bumped it up to 183% to make the swing seem even faster and harder. In the close-up clip, I started it with 170% speed and then slowed it down immediately after the hit so that we could see the wood chips fly off in slow motion. So for this little section, it's both a transition and an intensifier by making it faster than real life. 
This can be a great trick for big impacts or fight scenes. Speeding a punch or kick up even just a little bit can make it seem a lot more impactful. And the final way that I use speed ramping in this whole sequence was to sync up all the important points with the music. I filmed the whole thing at 120 frames per second so I knew on a 24 frame per second timeline I would be able to slow it down to 20% speed without any choppiness. This gives me a lot of flexibility with the speeds that I use and by playing with the handles of my speed points I was able to make important things happen at precisely the right moment when they would have the most impact with the music. So now you know some of the ways that you can use speed ramping and some of the ways that I use them here. So let's watch this one more time and see if you can point any more of them out. So in this time around, were you able to catch more of the speed ramping tricks that you learned about than you saw the first time you watched it? As always, I want to hear from you, so leave a comment down below. Let me know, is speed ramping something that you're already using, or is this something that you think you can incorporate into your videos? And on your way down to the comment section, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on future videos. Huge thank you to Doer for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check out the link in the description and use the code DUNA15 to get 15% off your purchase. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.